What's up you guys? I'm back in Monterey diving and I'm with Tuan again. We're gonna be trying to get his first link cod. And so that's that's the main goal today. Conditions, they look kind of swelly, but not not horribly bad. I kind of do want to get a lot of fish because I'm gonna be going back up to Davis tomorrow and I want to take a lot of fish to my family, but let's just see. I made some amazing fish tacos last time I caught fish. So I want to replicate that for my family because I gave it to Tyra and her family last time. Huh? Let's kill it today, man. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's go. I'm going to get a link out to the Annika. Watch. Swan said we'd have an epic hike down. After going down this little tiny rock, I don't know, but the thing is, I'm really young and uh, it's just it's just so easy for me. But Tuan, I thought he was meaning like a big sur hike. I was kind of scared. I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but it looks kind of calm. Out over there, there's a couple big waves and over there too, but we're probably just going to keep close. Time to get set up. So right off the top, first dive down, I see this big school of blues at around 30 feet down. It was absolutely crazy, insane, and I knew this was gonna be an awesome dive. The school's right here. Tuan and I started doing one up, one down, but the thing about these conditions was that we were in around 55 feet of water and visibility was only 15 feet, so after that, I just could not see him at all. But what we would do is we would keep track of each other's float lines, that way we know the approximate location of where we are. Tuan was the first one to take a shot at the rockfish and he ended up getting this like 12 inch blue rockfish so it was a pretty good size. There were a lot of good fish in the school that we saw there and I decided right then and there that's what we were going to do for the rest of the dive. Just try to get these blue rockfish. Go the other end of the spear. Not that end. Because that way it can't come out. Dude that's a nice fish. So over the next couple of dives, I tried to find a huge rockfish to shoot and I wasn't able to. Those rockfish over there were probably around 14 inches and the ones over on the other side right here were probably around six to eight inches and blue rockfish don't get that big. So I should have gotten a 14 inch one, but I didn't. That's straight off my gut, there's a big school there. This dive, we were diving pretty deep. I usually hang around 15 feet and I don't have to go too much further to get the rockfish and the ling cod that I target. But this dive I actually went down to 42 feet, which is the deepest I have ever dove, just surpassing my 40 foot dive down in Baja blue water spear fishing. And it's pretty crazy getting down to these depths because after 30 feet you have negative buoyancy versus the neutral or positive buoyancy that you have near the top and near 20 feet. At that depth, it also feels like you're in your own little world, whereas when you're closer to the surface or you have rock structure all around you just 15 feet down, it doesn't really feel like that. So I follow these ones we have right here, and there's some right there. I also usually don't dive so deep because I don't have anyone with me, so I try to keep it pretty chill and pretty relaxed. Sorry, just a quick mic switch there. I know I had it in the wrong position earlier, but I switched it, so let's keep going. It was definitely an interesting experience targeting the blue rockfish versus their counterparts that tend to hide in holes and in different foliage. Those fish will let you get close enough to shoot them. They'll get really skittish if you eye them for too long and they'll just bolt and you'll never see them again. But the blue rockfish, they don't really care too much that you're there, but if you swim a bit close to them, they'll start swimming a bit further away. And it was really hard figuring out how it's gonna get close enough to them to get a good shot in. On the other side of this kelp, there's a big school. So this entire time, I had been keeping track of the school of rockfish and where they were. I'd pointed out to Tuan, he would dive down, shoot a nice rockfish, come back up, and then go all the way to his float to put it on his stringer, come all the way back, because there was a lot of current, and reload his gun, and once he had done that, I'd have to dive down, find the school again, and then it was just like that on a repeat. So I finally decided that that huge rockfish that I was looking for was an unrealistic expectation. So I set my sights on one of the decent rockfish. Now that wasn't a miss, 
I just needed a gun with more power because I hit exactly where I was supposed to but the gun didn't have enough power to actually go through the scales of the rockfish because the fish was too far. Starting off my dive, I was using my 55 centimeter gun mainly because it's very maneuverable and I usually use it for hole hunting, but once I decided that it wouldn't have the range or the power to shoot the fish so far away, I switched to my 75 centimeter gun, which has two long bands rather than one short band. So taking a quick review, I actually didn't have my safety off, so that's why you can see the gun movement, but no shot. And then after you see me looking at this calico bass getting totally distracted. I think I saw like a calico bass. I see. I saw one earlier. Over there, not here. Another thing to note is that the fish have different reactions to you based on their size. The smaller ones aren't too scared of you. They might even come up to you and check you out like, what is that shiny thing on the end of your spear because they think it's a bait fish. Whereas the medium ones are a lot more wary of you. They'll keep their distance. And the big ones, as you can see in this video, will often stay so far that you can only see their silhouette. At this time, I was in a bit of a time crunch because Tuan wanted to go back in, he wasn't feeling too good, and I knew I had to get at least one more fish to bring home, so I went down, determined to catch at least one more. Luckily, while I was checking out these fish off the ledge, two fish approached from behind me and gave me just the perfect shot. When you're spear fishing next to kelp beds, it's pretty important to try to keep your catch out of the kelp or they will just swim around and around that kelp and get it tangled. I also made sure to mark the spot on my GPS watch. That way if I wanted to, I could find the exact spot that I was diving in. Then I put the fish on the stringer and I was super happy that I was able to catch two really good sized fish, especially on a very rough day. Tuan wanted to head into shallower waters, and so I followed him out, using my banks board to make swimming easier. Almost the entire dive, Tuan and I were fighting this seagull specifically for our fish. It came back multiple times trying to eat my fish until I hooked my fish stringer underneath the banks board so it was in the water. Then, after it couldn't steal my fish, it started stealing Tuan's. Dude, that was an amazing spot. Yeah. It was everywhere. Earlier, yeah? yeah? That's not good. Yeah? yeah? Your dad inspired you. And guess who ended up following us all the way back in? That seagull right there. That seagull ended up eating a whole half of Tuan's fish. Near the shore, we searched under every rock, under every big piece of kelp, trying to find a ling or a cabezon or a rockfish that would be hiding there. But even though there were so many good hiding spots, we didn't see anything. The only fish I saw was this one in this clip right here. And I didn't even see it. Even watching this video again and again and again, I have no idea where that cabezón came from. But it was a big one and I missed it. Okay, so I have like 5% left of battery. We've got fun showering over there. His luxury shower. I'm actually thinking of getting one of those. I usually just... Okay, take two. We've got fun showering in the background right there. <laughs> and... Uh, it was pretty surgy, especially in the last part. We went right in, didn't see too much off the start in the rocks. And so we decided to go out to some kelp and there we just saw schools and schools of blue rockfish, which was pretty crazy. I've never seen fish like those. And I made the mistake of starting off with my 50 centimeter gun and I didn't have the range to shoot those fish because they like to stay away from you. And so I switched to the 75 centimeter and by the time I switched, Tuan had already like picked off three. He was just chilling. I was able to get two rockfish, which I already filleted with the 70 centimeter gun. By then it was super surgy. 
Tuan was throwing up. I was going all over the place and we were about to like hit the rocks. So we just had to come back in. We didn't expect to see much in the rocks again, but we did see two cabezon, which we both weren't able to get. And Tuan shot a couple more rockfish. That's, that's pretty much it. Any thoughts on the dive, Tuan? It was a good dive, just super surging today. Would love to come back to this place though. I think we'll do better next time when it's you know a little bit more calm. But man, I missed that cabazon. It was a big one. Yeah, so that's it for this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.